the Manhattan, a quintessential classic that every drinker should try at least once in his life. In fact, it's such an iconic classic that I'll use it as my bar tester. When I find myself in a bar that I've never been in, which happens sometimes, I will order a Manhattan if I'm not sure that cocktails are the way to go. If they make it correctly, I feel pretty decent about ordering cocktails from there on out. If not, depending on what went wrong, it's probably bottled beer for me the rest of the night. <laughs> this is a drink that every bartender should know how to make, whether he works at a Chili's or a local dive bar with only one bottle of whiskey. Sadly, however, I find that that is often not the case. Yes, it is an old drink, probably invented in the 1870s or maybe even a little bit earlier, but it has stood the test of time for a reason. Beverage with Blippi. That's me. <laughs> I know. The Manhattan has a reputation that only snooty rich people or old geezers order it. Well, that is a shame. The classic Manhattan is a wonderfully approachable whiskey cocktail, and creative mixologists can put endless spins on it to make it an approachable drink for a wide segment of the drinking population. All right, now we're gonna make a proper Manhattan. Really easy drink, it's only three ingredients. We're gonna be using a rye whiskey. Now traditionally, this is what it would have been made with uh, back when it was invented in the 1870s or so, is rye whiskey, though you can certainly make it with any other kind of whiskey you'd like, Canadian whiskey, bourbon, Tennessee whiskey. I've even had people order brandy Manhattans. That's not my favorite thing in the world, certainly not a whiskey, uh, but a brandy Manhattan is something you might run across as well. Second ingredient, sweet vermouth, or red vermouth, and Angostura bitters. So we're gonna use those three ingredients. For glassware, there's a couple of choices. I personally like my Manhattans, and actually most cocktails that are served that way, I like them up. And that is in the cocktail glass here. You could certainly serve this in a coupe if you want. I like the up drinks because once it's served to me, that is the amount of dilution it's going to have. So it is ready to go. Uh, a lot of people also like it in a rocks glass uh, with some ice. If you would like your Manhattan that way, uh, especially people who think that a Manhattan might be a little too strong, uh, if you serve it uh, on ice in a rocks glass, uh, sip on it a little bit, and as you sip on it, that ice will melt and dilute the drink a little bit. So you could also do it in a rocks glass. And that is uh, it. We're going to go through it here. We have our mixing glass, and we're going to use two and a half ounces of the rye. It's two and a half ounces. That is two ounces on that side of the jigger, and my jigger here is half ounce on the other side. Ooh, a little much there. There we go. And we're going to use one ounce of sweet vermouth. So the parts on this drink, if you are making it a slightly different size, are going to be one part vermouth to two and a half parts of whiskey. And then this is personal preference on your dashes. Some people say one dash, some people say two. I run across some people who want three dashes of bitters in their Manhattan. That's getting a little too much for me. I like two real quick ones. So one, two. And now this is how we are going to do our Manhattan and how every Manhattan should be made. We are going to stir it. Now you stir, stir a drink for about 30 seconds. Stirring creates a cocktail that has a velvety texture. And uh, you want that mouth feel, the little heavier feel on the tongue, kind of coats the tongue. And you're going to get that by stirring. If you shake this cocktail, and a lot of people will shake it, especially if you don't go to a cocktail bar, they'll make you a Manhattan. If they know how to make it, they uh, put the ingredients in and they will shake the hell out of it. What that does is it aerates it. It makes it uh, a little crisper and bubblier. That's not really the feel we want with this drink. And for the rocks drink i like 
a big, huge globe of ice like this. So we're going to serve it with one giant round sphere of ice. And the reason that we do that is because while we're wanting a little bit of dilution with a rocks drake, we don't want it to dilute too fast. And a big cube like this is going to melt much, much slower than four or five, six, eight little tiny ice cubes in there. So, get our strainer in there, just strain that right over the top of our big ice cube. And that is what we would have. Now, for the garnish on Manhattan, either rocks or up like I'm going to have it, what you do is you serve it with a cherry, one maraschino cherry. Don't get one of those crappy red ones in a plastic jug uh, that are just artificial flavor and a whole bunch of junk. You don't want that. You want an actual maraschino cherry in natural juice, not in sugar syrup. Uh, Luxardo brand, the original maraschino cherry, if you can get those, fantastic. They are very expensive, about $30, $35 a jar. Um, but you want one cocktail cherry, natural cherry like this, right in the cocktail. I am uh, not using the Luxardo brand. I'm using uh, Till and Farms uh, Stonewall Kitchen. Uh, and their maraschino cherries, also very, very nice, all natural. Uh, not $35 a jar, though they are about $19 or $20 a jar. And there we have it, the classic Manhattan. Classic Manhattan. Give this one a try. Uh, a couple of different changes you can do uh, if you don't like this particular recipe. Like we said, you can make this with any whiskey or some people even do it with brandy if you want a little uh, smoother, softer flavor. Uh, but the rye that I used uh, will give a spicier, kind of bitier Manhattan. If you want something a little bit sweeter, try it with bourbon instead uh, or Canadian whiskey. Uh, you can even do it with uh, Tennessee whiskey like Jack Daniels. It's going to maybe be even a little bit sweeter. Uh, so mix it up. You can also fool around with the proportions a little bit. Uh, we did one ounce of vermouth and two and a half ounces of whiskey. Uh, but you could do a little bit less whiskey, uh, maybe like Meredith's uh, husband likes uh, in uh, the video we did on John Taffer making a terrible Manhattan and uh, you can make a drink that you like. Or, like I said in the video, just put it on the rocks instead of up. Maybe it'll water it down a little bit. It'll take a little bit of sting out of the whiskey, and you'll enjoy it like that. So fool around with it. Make a drink that you like. <laughs>